Hi, my name is Dorothea Toll, and I'm an assistant professor at Virginia Tech at the Department of Biological Sciences. And my lab is interested in how plants are communicating with their environment. And believe it or not, plants are able to communicate with other organisms. And they do so by producing chemicals. And we are particularly interested in those chemicals that are volatile. So plants can release volatiles into the atmosphere and other organisms can sense those as signals. And plants are producing volatiles from different organs. So for instance from flowers, most of you might be familiar with floral scent, but plants can also produce these volatiles from leaves, for instance, when they are under attack by insects. And these volatiles can deter those caterpillars that are feeding on plants, but these volatiles can also call in help from other organisms like predators or parasitoids, which will attack these caterpillars. And we call this the cry for help. So volatiles are really good for a lot of different purposes for plants. And what we try now to understand is if volatiles are also produced from roots of plants. And if the same type of defense and uh, ecological purpose of volatiles also works in the soil. Now, I'm standing here at an instrument that we are actually using to analyze our volatiles. It's a regular gas chromatograph that's this part here and it's attached to a, a detector which we call a mass spectrometry detector. Now, how are we uh, trapping our volatiles? And I would like to show you um, what kind of vials we're using. We're using these 20 mil uh, screw cap glass vials and you actually will be using those also in your experiment and you can put anything, any plant material in here, uh, leaves, flowers, um, in our case this would be roots and now we are inserting these, this syringe type um, uh, needle here and then we will release, that's a little bit difficult to see maybe, but we will release um, a fiber into the airspace of this vial. And this fiber will allow uh, volatiles to be trapped or adsorbed on the surface of um, this particular fiber. We can incubate um, our samples for 30 minutes for an hour. All these volatiles should then be trapped on this fiber. And after that, we will just take the fiber out and you will send me this sampler by mail or I will come to your classroom and collect these samplers. I will bring them to our lab to this uh, machine to the gas chromatograph and all we are doing then is inserting this fiber into the machine. There is a hot injector here and all the volatiles will be thermally released um, by injecting this fiber into the machine. And then the volatiles will, by gas, chroma gas chromatography, uh, separate it um, in this uh, machine and then uh, analyzed by um, this detector. And I don't want to go too much into detail about the machine right now. And uh, maybe I can show you now how we're actually growing the plants and um, what our model plant is. Okay, so here we're in our growth room where we're actually growing our model plant which is called Arabidopsis thaliana or mouse ear crest. Maybe you've heard from your teacher already about uh, this plant. And here is a pot with Arabidopsis thaliana growing. This is actually a weed and it's a very useful model system in plant biology. It has a very short life cycle, just about um, eight weeks. Uh, it produces these rosettes, as you can see, and then eventually it will produce shoots and start flowering. And these flowers are then producing thousands of uh, seeds, so you can collect lots of seeds and do uh, nice experiments just by having a good seed harvest. Um, the plant is growing in the northern hemisphere. Um, even in Virginia, in several counties, you can find Arabidopsis saliana if, if, if you're interested in, in looking for that plant. So this is how the plants look like when they're about, I would say, maybe five to six weeks old. When they are young, they look like...
like this. These are seedlings. You can see they're pretty tiny. And in your experiment, you will start growing the plants actually from seeds in soil. So you will produce seedlings that are as small as this. And here you can see they have produced their cotyledons and a first uh, leaf pair. What you will then do is you will take these plants from soil with their tiny roots, you have to be careful with that, and transfer these into a hydroponic culture system. And I can show you how that looks like. So here, and this is not perfect, but it shows you in a, in a good way what can go wrong with hydroponic culture. Here you can see uh, how we are growing Arabidopsis um, in the hydroponic culture system. It's basically a tank, and you will have that in your lab, and it's filled with a mineral solution. We do have a bubble stone in there, like you would have in an aquarium to provide wood aeration. And then on top of here, we have these baskets with stone wool, and the plants will actually be placed into the stone wool so that the root, roots can grow through the stone wool into the um, aqueous solution. Now, if you are not careful with your plants when you transfer them from the soil to the hydroponic system, they might eventually die. And this is what has happened here. We were not careful enough. So this is very critical. Some of your plants might die, and you should always have some backup in your pots so that you can transfer some new plants into the stone wool. If they're growing fine, then you should see a nice rosette, as you can see here, and they will grow eventually to this stage, and you can already see that they have produced a nice root mass. And these are exactly the roots that we want to analyze. So what we will do then, once you have nice, uh, nicely grown plants, we will cut, no actually the first step is we will treat these roots with the jasmonic acid, as you will discuss with your teacher, and then um, we will, after treatment of the roots, we will cut them and we will do the volatile analysis in the glass vials that I was just showing to you. So we will compare just Monet treated and controlled plants and see what kind of differences we observe in different ecotypes. That actually brings me to the point that we, we don't know um, if different ecotypes of these plants are producing different volatiles from their roots. And this is something that we have never investigated, so your project will really be part of a great research uh, project here in my lab. Um, just a few words about the ecotypes. We have four different ones. Um, we have provided seeds from four different ecotypes, and those come from very different geographical regions around the world. So we have one from Colombia, here in the United States. We have one from Poland. We have one from the Cape Verde Islands, which is um, off the coast, west coast of Africa. And we have one from Kashmir in India. So very different regions. And um, so we're very excited and, and anxious to see what kind of results we will get. So that's all I can tell you at this point about our project. And I hope you got an idea how we're growing the plants and how we will do our